Hi, I'm Ali Patterson. On this episode of Future Banking, we speak with Fiserv about consumer technologies. Over in Madrid, we speak with BBVA about the customer experience. We also head to France to speak to Philippe Wadja, Chief Economist at Nataxis, about the economic outlook. But first, we speak with Barclays and Truefone about BYOD within mobile. What are sort of some of the key issues from a BYOD policy? From a policy perspective, it's making sure that the both the bank and the organisation and the colleague or the, the employee, partner or customer know their, their, their place in that, in that policy and what that means to them. So in terms of the security risks around BYOD, I wouldn't say the security risks as such, there's security risks in every aspect of technology, BYOD is just another one that you have to take into account and some of the level of complexity comes in is where the, 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 the organisation doesn't own the device, it's the user's device. When we move on from the policy piece, um, which is knowing whose responsibility lays where, the, the key thing around security is that you pick the right vendors that are right with your business, um, that you develop the right apps in the right way to get to a position whereby um, you're confident in the level of security you've got, you're not losing data, you're managing that data effectively, and you've mobilised appropriate technologies as opposed to, to things that are just shouldn't be mobile, where, where either regulatory or constraints denote that it's better left as is and not, not put on mobile devices. Can we talk a little bit around some of the identity and data issues around uh, BYOD? Every customer I've ever met, or every bank I've ever met, or financial services body I've met, has slightly variant degrees of what they interpret regulation to be. And as a result of interpretation of regulation, that then actually drives what they believe to be an end user or the banking property or where liability starts and ends. So a number of people will say that, you know, if it's a corporate device, it's a corporate, it has to be corporately locked down and therefore that has to be regulated. Um, but at the same point in time, is if a corporate is putting a, for example, an application on somebody's phone to lock down certain parts of that phone, surely those parts are still corporately locked down, therefore the device is a corporate device. So that blurred line um, does give a challenge to anybody trying to work out where does this actually end. It will probably work itself out within the next sort of three to five years, whereby more standardisation has to be brought into the market. So I think within the UK, Europe, um, certainly in America, I think that we're still in transition of how regulation gets put into the financial services industry. I know it's been defined, but I think that its interpretation therefore leaves sort of you know, sort of nebulous black holes. Therefore, how the actual liability of the regulation is is applied to a device is a huge challenge to any you know CIO IT lead to define you know what a regulated user actually has to have, um, and then what degree in which the the device is locked down to the company, and then where that lockdown actually ends if the end user, for example, is paying his own phone bill, and how that sort of then marries up with what's going on in the banking world. Truefone have a fantastic offering with localised mobile phones, but has there been much user resistance? I don't think you, over, you can't overcome user resistance in terms of just forcing through it. Um, you've got to understand why there's that resistance there. And generally it's, it, it's on a, either IT or the organisation to make sure that they, they do the right things in terms of communicating that policy, communicating the, 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 the benefits, the drawbacks, and giving and empowering the, the colleague, employee, partner, whoever it is, with the, with the necessary information to make the right decision uh, and, um, and understand what they're entering into. So uh, if you get resistance, I suggest you look at it very carefully um, and understand why you're getting resistance and then look at ways you can help remove that either by uh, additional technology or policy changes or education or training or whatever it is. I think, I think technology is the easy part. Technology is absolutely the easy bit to do. It's the communication, marketing, awareness, bringing a brand to it, bringing it to life. That is the, that's the difficult part. Um, the, the rest of it, the, the, the nuts and bolts are, are easy to some degree. It's winning the hearts and minds, getting the people to understand the proposition and then well, if you can do that, and if you can do that at a base level, you get um, and you can get a following. You get like groundswell that then it sells itself, and, and your job's done, as it were. It just virally grows, um, and that's where you get a really interesting and um, successful deployment in this space. Let's say I leave university and I get to a, a, a bit of investment banking or any industry. 
choosing which company I would work for is dependent on which device I can use. Right? So if I've got the latest and greatest phones, which I'm used to using in at university, and I go to a, like an organisation whereby they give me very old, technologically defunct stuff, that's a problem. But at the same point in time, you know, even I personally um, you know, would prefer to keep work and home life separate. And so how far do I want to enable my work life to be consistently on? You know, if I'm at home, like the French regulations quite recently, mm -hmm. you know, emails and stuff past six o'clock, you, know, you don't have to answer them. Well, my phone is my work phone and my personal phone because I, you know, I like to use my device. Therefore, if it buzzes, it buzzes. And I kind of feel I have to respond even if it's after six. I do that because I think it's the nature of the beast. So I think there is resistance to people wanting the company to pay their phone bills. Right. I'm working for you, therefore you should pay for my, my, my phone. Uh, at the same point in time, I can see complete understanding that, you know, if, if I want to take my iPhone to work, um, it's not the normal corporate device. As long as it's secure, I should be able to use that, but I should, you know, really pay for it myself. And there's, there's a lot of blurred lines. I think there will be resistance. But at the same point in time, I don't think it's resistance that will necessarily get in the way of development and progress. I think that this is going to be the way forward. Um, I believe that, you know, enabling people to use the most mobile communicational devices, be that tablets, smartphones, you know, Google Glass, where we get to next, you know, how could that change conferencing, for example? Yeah. So, you know, I think that, I think technology will win. Um, it just depends, you know, I think, look at near-field communication. That has been, you know, tapping your credit card on a pad in a shop. Probably wasn't cool five years ago, because everyone was scared about how much could be taken and all that kind of stuff. Now that's very commonplace, um, you know, London transport. Now you use that on you know the underground. I think that you know people using their phones in the workplace will become fairly standard practice in the next five years. Even in Truefone, where you ask someone to change network operator, you're embracing there's always a resistance to change. And I think that it's quite inherent that people like their stuff that works. I always see that you know we enable people to have multiple numbers, for example, on the same SIM card, so a UK number, a US number, a Hong Kong number. Once you've embraced it it's very hard to go back because it becomes even more part of your life. You become more accepting of it. Um, I think that once people have got past that getting rid of the old and in with the new, which is kind of their device, because it's their device, they use it more. And the best thing about using devices that help you communicate more is that you are communicating more, and therefore you're you know, more integrated into society. Your social media, your networking increases. Um, and I think that's only a positive. We're starting to see the economy recover across Europe. I speak to Philip Watcher to get his view on this. In fact, you know, there is a, a lot of unemployment in France, and so there is a uncertainty on their income. And so in that case, they really want to have very safe assets. And that's what we, we've seen uh, in the last two, four, five years. Uh, we have seen a, a, a change in the way they save and the, the type of asset they really need to have. And uh, there is a kind of trade-off between uncertainty. If you have uncertainty on your job, you, have, you don't want uh, uncertain uh, assets. And in other part of the, of the cycle, you know, at the end of the, uh, of the 19th, for example, you, we have no uncertainty on job. Growth was very strong, etc. So people were, uh, did, did want to take risks on, the, on, their, on their saving. We, have, we are in the other part of the, of the cycle, and that's very, uh, it's problematic in the fact that they do not want to, to buy as risky assets. And uh, so it's a very, uh, uh, they have a very narrow choice. They really want very uh, specific assets, not large assets. That's uh, what characterizes the uh, current situation from uh, the customer point of view. You, you have to distinguish between uh, institutional customers uh, who can take some risk sometime and, uh, and retail customers. And this later, uh, when there is a lot of uncertainty, doesn't want to, to take two risks, one on their job and one on their saving. So I think we, we, we've seen that in France, but when you, you read studies from other countries, you have the same kind of behavior. I love my phone. I use it for everything. Camera, phone calls, even making payments. But how does the general public view payments through a mobile device? Have you ever used your phone to make a payment? Um, well, this is my phone, so no. Because I usually use my work phone and I don't sort of like use it as a payment phone. Type of thing. I just like cash. I like to give cash. On What's the okay. best? Um, I don't know how to make a payment on, on my phone because I just don't know how to. Using my phone is way easier than cash. It was easier than cash. 
yes, it was easier than cash. Um, basically instant and it's easier in terms of the, any amount. So no need to worry about change. So I've come to Fiserv to speak to Serge Van Dam about the future of mobile technologies. Do consumers use mobile tablets and online channels differently? The short answer to that question is yes. We sent our user experience team out in the field earlier uh, in the year and they spent several hundred hours with consumers in their homes and talked to them about their habits and their attitudes towards different digital channels. And We expected consumers to look at digital as one and the same, regardless of the screen size or whatever, but quite the opposite happened. Consumers saw mobile, tablet and online as very distinct channels. Not just distinct in terms of the screen size, but how they use them. Um, so mobile was seen as something you do for efficient, quick uh, interactions. So when it comes to the tablet, consumers expect the experience to be more like a magazine rather than efficient and rapid like it might be in a mobile device. So although it's a portable device, it actually isn't a mobile device in the same sense. And they expect to be able to lean back and enjoy the experience. Whereas when they think about mobile, they mostly think about something that's really efficient or what we call snacking. And when we talk about computers or traditional PCs, consumers now really want to use those for work only, largely things to do with data entry and inputs. So consumers really do see these three channels as distinct. I spoke with BBVA to talk about what steps they're taking for a multi-channel view. How have you seen users uptake tablets compared to mobile? We actually think about that a little differently. Uh, what we've seen in this mobile revolution is that consumers will get content and information through all sorts of devices. It could be through a tablet, it could be through a mobile phone, it could be through their television, it could be through some other wearable like Google Glass. So our technology was built in a way that can serve up all of the different uh, mobile devices with the content. So let, let me give you an example. Um, we have a goal to double the amount of our users that are using our online services and quadruple meaning four times more, the number of people using our mobile device. And at the end of the day, mobile and the internet could be through a responsive website, or it could be through our, a tablet app, or it could be through a mobile phone app. At the end of the day, we're sort of indifferent because the technology empowers every one of those devices. So what are the differences around consumer expectations? Well, because consumers look at these devices as being distinct or different in their view, they expect the experiences in those devices to be different. So we call that the tailored experience. So consumers told us pretty clearly in this research that they expect the experience on the digital channel of choice to be tailored to that device. So some examples when it comes to banking or financial services uh, using those three distinct channels are online is probably the best place in which to do data entry, to do things like printing, printing whether it's printing statements, invoices or otherwise, whereas the tablet is a much better place to do some research or some analysis or perhaps uh, look at different options around how you spend your money. And mobile is the place you do things that are quick and speedy. So you get an alert telling you that you need to transfer some funds because you're going to go into overdraft, then you do that right there and then and you do that quickly. So we call that the tailored experience because the experience is tailored for the distinct online mobile or tablet device and is really focused on the unique opportunities that those uh, channels represent for the consumer. How is BBVA physically taking a step towards that singular view of the customer? Our system is architected uh, using the customer as the unique key. Okay. So many other banks uh, based on their legacy systems may be keyed to the first account you open, the business unit that opened the account, the geography that you're based in. At BBVA, the, the thing is the customer. So everything else is centered around that. So that helps a bunch. We view our, our transformation as an industry and as a bank as twofold. One is there's a big investment in technology. So as, as we build out the capabil capabilities using our technology, that will enable it. But the second piece, and we believe one of the, the most important pieces and one of the things that differentiate our model, is basically the cultural transformation that has to go with that. So how do you train your people to use the technology in a way that helps your customers and make sure that that happens seamlessly across all of your channels? So part of it is having the platform and the tools, and the second is the cultural change and the training that goes along to empower your employees to really be client-centered and help customers. How can banks look to meet these expectations? So our philosophy is that financial institutions really need to think about those uh, devices as distinct 
and they need to think about how consumers expect the experiences to be tailored to the device that they're using. And so they really should focus on the use cases that are best delivered through those channels. So there's a notion at the moment in the industry that all transactions should be available through all channels, digital or otherwise. We don't actually believe that. What we believe is that the experience should be tailored and the functionality should be specific to, the, to those devices and hence be tailored. So a good example for us would be around personal financial management. So if you want to do personal financial management, the mobile experience should be focused on what we call actionable insights, right? So rather than actually managing charts and doing data entry on your mobile device, you should basically give the consumer a notification or an alert and enabling them to take action that, that allows them to manage their money better. It wouldn't, it wouldn't apply for a mortgage necessarily on your mobile phone, certainly not something that was data entry intensive. Now, you might decide that mortgages is a priority for you, Right? But in the online world, data entry is an easy thing to do. It's not really a barrier to adoption or usage. Whereas if you look at the mobile world, you're going to have to do something different. So you might do some automation around data entry. You might actually do a provisional approval, pending some further documentation later and so on. The point is that the experience is tailored depending on the device of choice. Currently, there's a lot of talk in the industry around being able to start a transaction in one channel and, and not being able to finish it there and doing so in another channel. Now, that's typically a challenge of the infrastructure in place in a financial institution. The reality is most consumers, if they can, would rather start and finish something as quickly as possible, as easily as possible, and without having to change channels. But that's not to say that the channels shouldn't be linked. Quite the opposite. They have to be. The credentials should be the same. The data should be the same. Right? And the experience should be consistent, so there's no confusion whenever the customer has an experience. But the idea being that if a customer can do something simply in one channel and complete it there, that will always be the preference of a consumer. On the next Future Banking, we speak with confirmers about user feedback. We also speak on innovation with Nationwide, and we also speak with Cisco about the technology behind this.